Hello everyone, it's 9.56 p.m. So my goal is to try to go to bed earlier tonight. I don't know if 10.30 or 11, but last night I tried to go to bed earlier. And what happened was I had to feel the vibrating again. Plus the um neighbors across their uh TV was loud but at the same time it wasn't as loud as the night before but that man looked like he would have been the type of person who would have done something crazy to me but I just needed my dog on peace you know so <clears throat> I'm feeling better today you know I mostly had a good day today but it wasn't perfect, of course. But um, today I spent a lot of the I spent a lot of the day being extremely bored, with not much of anything to do. And um, I felt bored, but um, I also been lately feeling like I haven't been having much of anything to talk about or anything to say. You know, I think I've talked too much for, you know, a while lately. But, um, see, when I had Twitter, if I would announce I'm going to bed, even if I was on the streets outside, then I have to deal with the vibrating torture. And then when I get back on Twitter, the vibrating stop. And then when I decide to get sleepy and try to get off Twitter, then it's like they want to keep me up until 2 o'clock in the morning, torture me with the vibrating. <clears throat> and then I try to go to sleep after 2 o'clock in the morning and then awaken at 3 with the forced urination and slash or forced diarrhea. And then there go the perps watching and monitoring me. <clears throat> It's very creepy, y'all. See, if you haven't been gang stalked, you gotta, I mean, you gotta experience it for yourself to know what we are going through. We targeted individuals to know what we're going through. You have to experience it yourself. Plus, line it up with one of the symptoms. I mean, some of the symptoms. Um, Why did I say one of them? Line up with some of the symptoms that you read online. I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not stupid. <clears throat> and I have a right to have my voice heard without being dismissed or discredited, without being silenced, and so do others. <clears throat> so, um, even so-called Christians, either part of the programming, you know, part of the gang stalking, or... They're ignorant because you ain't going to call me fearful and paranoid when, you know, this uh, this secret needs to get out. I mean, it's been kept secret from us and we're the ones suffering it. And they want it to be the big, the gang stalking to be the biggest kept secret. I mean, you know, the best kept secret. And then we can't even get any help. Seem like the only help is to trust in Jesus. That's the only thing. <clears throat> but there's a, a fake Christian perp who um came on my page earlier today and tried to promote his own channel. And I mean, well, actually last night and then came on my page today and tried to call me fearful and paranoid and say that, oh, you should only focus on things that you can't see and not things that you can't see. And I used to be like that. And oh, you're just posting up so many videos you put, you know, causing people to have, you know, fear and paranoia and stuff or something. I, I don't remember. I don't want to twist his words up, but he said something along those lines. <clears throat> so that made me mad, you know, but people need to know what we're going through because me, I'm a single female by myself with no family or, you know, hardly any friends, maybe a couple, but I'm glad I have a few supporters. But you know, sometimes I feel discouraged and be like feeling like I don't have anybody. 
and then I it might be the I mean because people have told me numerous times don't nobody care about you nobody ain't nobody your friend and you think everybody's your friend and stuff but I think I have a couple of you know people but now I mean it seems like only one person that I'm in contact with over the phone and I thought that I lost that person but kind of find out you know everything's fine but Gina is gone so um she misunderstood my intent but she did that at least three times so um Yes, so, I mean, I, I healed, I emotionally healed from that faster than I thought I would, you know, but I'm thankful and glad that even if it's a small handful of people, I'm surprised I have any supporters, or even if it's a couple of people who like any of my books or anything like that, because the perps want to make sure I don't have any support, anyone to like me, and I heard that, you know, sometimes the fake T.I. perp infiltrators would brainwash, excuse me, manipulate and brainwash two real T.I.s into turning against each other while they have the the last laugh like Satan. <clears throat> and, um, so anyway, I just laid back and I just chilled out earlier today, but I didn't get to really rest my mind, but... I was doing a little research and watching a couple of documentaries and watching a few YouTube videos and stuff like that. But, because um, for research purposes, I, w- I w- was, um, went to watch a documentary about, you know, I didn't know that. I thought some people say New Orleans didn't have gangs, but some people say New Orleans have gangs. Some people say that they don't. But, you know, the gang men- the thug mentality, you know, um, just wondering, like, a lot of the main things that they say that they turn to gang bang because that's, and I mean, I lived in, I'm born and raised in New Orleans, but we weren't raised in the hood. But see, people like the foster mom, they act like they think that they're better because they were higher income and higher class. But my biological family, you know, consider as, you know, low income, living in the hood and everything like that. But the foster family thought that they were so much higher and better. And, you know, they look down on people who have to take public transportation while they're driving around in BMWs and stuff like that, have big houses and stuff. So it's like they have this elitist, high-minded mindset. Like the foster mom, people like her never had to taste homelessness, but look down on people who are homeless or who are who is who do have to suffer, you know, hunger and starvation and so it's it's like the, if they try to act like they were trying to train me to strive to be the best try to be the best of the best but at the same time blocking me purposely blocking me from trying to be better than what you know just deliberately holding me back if i know i had the potential to be smarter and you know try to challenge myself to take harder classes and hopefully be that successful doctor that I want to be. But you did me a favor, you know, because I'm grateful and thankful that um I that I didn't end up going in the avenues that in life that I wanted to because I didn't realize that it would cost you your soul. And that, you know, you'll have to, end, I mean, dealing with so much materialism and vanity and everything like that. So me going through what I've been through, it helps me have a different perspective or outlook on life. And it helps me, it helps me um, have more compassion and understanding towards other people struggling and suffering 
and also have um you know more humility and and try to be you know even though I know people say I complain a lot or whatever but I mean I I'm at least you know thankful to um be able I I mean it's like difficult the, the fact that I feel like a failure in certain avenues in life but then again it seemed like God put me on this path coming from bad to you know living in ignorance and not knowing the truth and then you know how the, the Bible says uh, many are called and few are chosen but I don't even feel like I'm chosen but some people say that they think I am but on you know the path of truth and stuff like that because some people say that when it comes to the new world order the the people who are suffering and struggling and begging for help and stuff like that they say that we'll win in the end because we like poor and homeless even if you're not homeless if you're living in poverty they say you have a better chance at survival than the the rich you know, the arrogant rich snobs who think they're better and they think they have everything and they think that they're invincible and they think that nothing will ever be, you know, none of their property or belongings will ever be, you know, just swept from them. They don't know what it's like to, lose, you know, have to lose, um, you know, su suffering material loss or having to lose, you know, a lot of money or have to... I mean, have to um, be at the, their lowest point because they've been sitting there living a high life all the time. So then they, they think that they're better because they're highly educated. But guess what? Y'all are spiritually retarded. If they think that they can look down on and laugh at people who, who talk a certain way or act a certain way in, in the hood and stuff like that. But, you know people people in the hood say the same thing you know basically they i mean a lot of us targeted individuals we're forced into poverty and to and homelessness and i i don't i mean i don't know if everybody's background but we all different have different backgrounds and different stories like this lady who was kind of a friend of the family of the biological family She's some kind of way, she married my Aunt Yvonne's husband, Daryl's brother. So, and she's a twin too, but a fraternal twin. But she said that, you know, everybody has a story to tell. And it's really true. Some people might just want to be quiet on their story, but they have a background and a history as well. So... So many people would rather look down upon and judge a person for their character or, you know, or their struggling or their suffering. And you laugh at what you don't, you don't know what you're laughing at, really, because and, and, and you think you're invincible, like it can never happen to you or your, any of your, anyone who you care about. So, I mean, the idea of just being black in America, the government and everybody, you know, even other black people who got some success, they deliberately and on purpose try to hold other people, other people back, you know, their own kind. And they don't try to tell people the secrets to success and try to better themselves. But, you know, if a person has a criminal history, they're blocked from just about everything in life, unless if you wonder how somebody got out of jail and pr or prison, and, you, and they just driving around in nice vehicles and stuff because they sold their soul and probably became a gang stalker. And what's funny is in that documentary that I saw earlier, I saw somebody in that video with funny headlights like a gang stalker and it wasn't a gang stalking video but it was a new orleans you know hood and gang banging video or whatever i was just you know watching it for more like for research purposes you know because 
sometimes you you just try to get a better understanding of certain things and um I tried to undo the programming with the foster family. You know, they think they're higher and better than everybody. But then I had to grow, you know, live in poverty myself. And then when I was in living in Los Angeles, you know, people asked me where I live at. And I said, well, I live, you know, it, what's that area? About Manchester and McKinley. And they said, they ignorantly laugh. Ha ha, you live in the hood. And I'm wondering, well, why are you laughing at me about living in the hood when you live in the hood too? But that was some wild stuff that, you know, L.A., people prostituting out in the open. In New Orleans, well, at least where I lived at, even in the hood in New Orleans, I didn't really see open prostitution like that. And then I've been approached I don't know how many times I've been approached, you know, me being dressed like this with these pants on and stuff like that, you know. I, well, I know I this is the same outfit I had on, you know, last night after I took my shower. So, me wearing t-shirt pants, well, these are sweatpants and stuff like that. Or if I have a hoodie on, if I I wear a hoodie or a big jacket on top of baggy um, sweatpants and stuff, and men still act like they want to try to approach me, you know, to prostitute, or they, you know, I get told I have a baby face. So if they think, if I was, I'm 37 now, but I was 30 years old and everybody thought I was 12, 11 and 12 for real. They actually thought I was 11 or 12 years old when I was 30. And so then um, I dealt with people trying to snatch me up because they thought I was a child. And they try to force grab me and try to put me in their vans, you know, for trying to snatch me up and try to kidnap me for human trafficking. And I'm not going to lie, it was nothing but illegal Mexicans who tried to do that to me. You, you know, I'm not going to be anybody's sex slave, and nobody's going to be my pimp, ever. So, get that out of your heads. But, you know, the foster mom, you know, she didn't raise us, you know, with that hood gangster mentality or whatever. But she thought that she was better and higher than that, or... But then she was shaming me, and I've, I mean, I told y'all about her predicting my homelessness and tell me I'm going to wind up in jail or dead and deserve it. I'm going to grow up to be a prostitute, and I'm going to end up homeless. I'm schizophrenic, uh, you know, all all that, you know. But I've been falsely rumored to be a prostitute by quite a few people, but I never, I promise y'all, I never day in my life prostituted, and I don't do drugs. I never was into any of that, so, but, um, you wouldn't tell that, you wouldn't tell that to your own biological birth kids, so why tell it to somebody else's kids, you know, you, and so, I, I, I mean, because some, I mean, even, I think the gang banging and the hood life, I think that's another form of MK Ultra too, and you know they start being traumatized from early childhood, you know to be three years old and I witness a murder, and stuff like that, and and they see stuff that a child shouldn't have to see, and it's considered normalized in the hood, that, you know so many it's frightened that you know people glorify murder and you know they always say between either St. Louis, Missouri or New Orleans, Louisiana being the uh you know the murder capital but then they between um New Orleans, Louisiana and San Francisco, I mean San Francisco, California being the gay capital. So New Orleans got both both the murder capital and the gay capital. So, um, and the voodoo capital. That's the third one. So, um, but anyway, I can't be on here too much longer because, you know, I got to save some space. 
But my goal is to try to go to bed earlier tonight, and I'm hoping for nothing crazy. But because last night, you know, before I went to bed, I ended up having to feel the vibrating so badly. Well, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, I had enough help to um get enough to stay here at least until the third and then the third I'm supposed to get my social security check so that'll be enough money for me to stay here at least until the 10th and then and and and, and, that, and that's all I would have enough money for on my own unless I had like any other help or donations but it doesn't seem like we'll get to have the um stimulus check soon because Biden lied and said that he was going to have us, you know, everything in the works. But the day he got in office and then that day came and there was no talk until like that Friday. And now it seemed like they're playing with us again. So I don't know what's going on. I really hate to have to do this, but. See, I don't know if y'all were able to hear that, but. I heard just barely noticeable, um, what do you call that? Siren, ambulance sirens. But I went and told the guy at the, um, front desk about the, um, the fan and the, the bathroom fan. He said they're supposed to fix it tomorrow. So I don't know, but I don't want to stay here too much longer on this phone right here. So, uh, thanks for listening. I'll see y'all later. I love y'all, and thanks for the support. Bye-bye.